So welcome back to another Talking Head video. This is something I don't quite do as often. However, given some of the upcoming changes, I wouldn't necessarily say big changes, but smaller ones, I figured I'd go ahead and knock this out because this is something that is going to affect me as a player, not so much as a creator, but more of a player in War Thunder. Now, first things first, this is all best guesses, educated guesses. I'm speculating here. I'm going to be talking about what I expect, but not what is coming. And I don't want you guys to say, oh, Justin knows something that we don't because I don't. Okay, I know a couple of things, but it's nothing in relation to this, I promise. So with that out of the way, Gaijin is going to release a couple of new things. The first thing being the BR changes. We are getting an increase to the battle rating itself from 11.0 to 11.3 which is very good and the only thing really moving up to that is i believe just the helicopters as well as some fixed wing aircraft and not mbts at least not quite yet but in my opinion it is most certainly a step in the right direction a br compression has always been a very rough thing in war thunder it's something that i suffer with every single day that i play it's very I would say paramount over in the 5.7 6.7 era because you have pretty much the end of the world war ii stuff and the beginning of the cold war stuff as well as mid to even late cold war stuff in the lower brs which more or less just destabilizes things so i like to see or i'm enjoying the idea that we are going to be getting a new 11.3 it's not a lot but it is enough to kind of put us at ease just for a little while longer. If you guys want to know more about the BR changes that are currently happening with a bunch of vehicles in the lower tiers, such as the Striker being moved up to 9.7, I actually have the list right here in front of me. If I click on ground vehicles, the, the HVG is going down to 7.7 in Arcade, the Chinu 2 is going up to 4.3, the 9040B going up to 9.0. If you guys are familiar with my channel and had seen that video, I told you this thing was going to go up. It's just a given. At 8.3, come on. I take this thing out to 11.0 all the damn time, and I spanked out to your tanks with this thing, okay? it's It was a given. It was going up to 9.0. I expected it to go up to 9.3, to be honest. But 9.0 is a solid area for it, in my opinion. And the next crucial important thing, if you haven't already noticed by the background footage, uh, we are getting some new shell types. Now, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to guess this. I don't know anything. The T90A is getting the 3BM60. That's known. That's a given right there. The Leopard 2PL and the 2A5 are getting DM53 in the L44 variant, which is kind of interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong. DM43 uh, is good. I thought it was a very good addition into the Leopard 2PL and the Leopard 2A5. It brought the vehicle up into the meta, though it kind of left the vehicle behind, which is the 122s. I kind of wish those would get the M95 because we're pretty much there. I would love to see them get it. I understand why Gaijin is not giving it to them because the armor makes that vehicle incredibly efficient in my opinion, but it's kind of falling behind a little bit. Look at it like just a dude who does leg day, I guess, and, and does everything but his arms. Okay, does that make sense? I don't know if you guys can visualize that. It's kind of weird to put it, I know. So having the Leopard 2A5 and the PL get DM53 does bring the vehicle up to par with pretty much everything else for that matter, but in truth, I thought DM43 was a perfect compromise to efficiency as well as just playability, I guess. It's not overbearing and it's not too underpowered. So DM53, as nice of an introduction as it may be for those vehicles, it's not something I was really looking forward to, but it's here, so I'll live with it. And the last one, now this one, this is very interesting. The M1A2 is getting the M829A2 APFSDS. Now we already have the A1, which has just about 600 millimeters of base penetration uh 10 meter at zero degrees right and we have almost 400 roughly at the 60 which is phenomenal okay maybe it's a little bit it's actually a lot off from that but you guys know what i mean and having the m829a2 which to my knowledge i'm not saying this is true penetrates i believe up to 700 millimeters i don't think we're gonna have that in war thunder that's just a given right there instead I more or less can see this penetrating maybe up to the old CL3143 standard or maybe even up to the DM53 in the L55 gun found on the Leopard 2A6. That's just my best guess. Maybe at around 630 to 650 base pen. If they go up to 700, that's going to be kind of a, an OP thing. But that in itself brings about another problem. We're not going to be getting another M1A2, I think. 
in truth. Now, the M1A2 is a fantastic vehicle, although it was more or less kind of left behind when it came to the M1A1HC, which, in my opinion, is superior to the M1A2. It really is, because it's less than, what, 6,000 repair costs versus 12,000 on the M1A2, and you get a, an APS system for the HC. You get everything that you would need with the M1A2 with the HC, the A1A1HC which more or less made the M1A2 kind of irrelevant to play. In fact, I've been avoiding playing it in favor for the HC because it's the same thing. Same protection, same mobility, same firepower, everything except a CITV, which I don't even use that often. I don't think anyone really does. So now that you're giving the M1A2 a new shell type, it more or less makes it worthwhile to play once again. Although that in itself right there, as I already stated, brings about its own problems that probably means we will not be getting another Abrams anytime soon, which Gaijin already did with the MA29A1 to basically justify the lack of a new Abrams, give the IPM1 its M900. And now we, we have the A2 having the MA29A2. So do you guys kind of get where I'm going with that? And as for the Russians, seeing that the T90 is getting the 3BM60 or the Sweenets 2, which I will make a separate video on for each of these vehicles, uh, that also means we probably won't be getting another Russian vehicle anytime soon, which is good. Let's be honest, they have too many. The BBM, fantastic vehicle, but holy crap, we have way too many Russian top-tier vehicles as it is. So Gaijin, please, no more T90s, no more T80s, just for a little while, okay? A little while. As for the Germans, I mean, the 2A6 is not coming anytime soon. I'm just gonna say that. I, I don't know anything, I just assume it's not going to. There's no point to really having it, in my opinion, okay? But what we can get is maybe the EX package for the Leopard 2A5. That's just me. I could be using that incorrectly too. But when I said we are getting 11.3 and that's going to bring about some newer vehicles, I can well imagine we will probably be getting maybe, just maybe, getting the Type 10 or the new Chally. Because in truth, the Chally 22F, fantastic vehicle as it is, and a potato in my opinion. It's, that's just me. I don't really like playing that vehicle too much because it doesn't fit my own personal play style, but it's not an overall well-performing vehicle and it's definitely not user-friendly. And as for the Japanese, well, the Type 90s, in my opinion, fantastic vehicles, great four second reload, but those vehicles are falling behind, well behind the meta in my opinion. They're very fast for the most part. Optics are terrible. Thermal sights are terrible. Uh, vertical targeting speed is just complete potato in my opinion. So having a new vehicle for the Japanese would be very nice as well as maybe for the French as well, which are kind of getting left behind. Maybe give the F2, the OFL 120 F2 instead of the F1 as an addition to kind of buff it up a little bit. But I think just for the time being, they're kind of comfortable the way they are, but they are kind of falling behind a little bit. But who knows? Gaijin did recently tease the uh, Chally 2 Dark Knight, Black Knight, I think it was uh, recently in a, in a leaked video, I guess, for some conference a couple of months back. It did show the MiG-29 and a bunch of other vehicles that, and the, and the Type 10 as well, uh, for the most part. So I can well imagine those vehicles are probably going to be on its way sometime, maybe in 2022. Who knows? But aside from that, that's really it. Just a couple of BR changes. I am currently waiting for the economy changes to really happen because the A2 needs, or the M1A2 needs its decrease in that repair cost being 12,000. Yeah, I know I sit at 115, 16 million silver lions, but I don't get that high up there just by spending it unnecessarily. So, or I, I guess losing all my games and just taking out expensive vehicles to get my butt kicked in it. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. But aside from that, the IKB-103, the SU-57B, the SU-85-7, they're all getting a uh, balance change in the rate of fire or shots per minute. So they're going up just a little bit more, like the IKB-103 is going up to 7.5 as opposed to six rounds per minute. SU-57, 12 to 14. The Horo is going from 3.5 or three to 4.5 rounds per minute. So you guys kind of see where the buffs are currently coming in. Aside from that, I will have the link to everything listed down below in the description, assuming I don't forget it. I'm reminding my editing self that, hey, don't forget to put the stuff at the end of the video or down in the description because I have a terrible habit of doing that. So yeah, that's honestly all I've got for you. And I'm looking forward to a lot of these updates. And I'm curious to see how the new M829A2 is going to fare in the current environment because having an M1A2 with a six second loading 150 level ace crew is going to make things incredibly interesting. And you can bet I will be having a video out for that on the day of release alongside the DM53 for those L44 wielding Leopard 2PL and the 2A5 
Maybe a new one for the T90 with the 3BM60, as the uh, T90 has, in my opinion, the best optics of all the Russian tanks at the high tier environment. But again, that's all I got for you. Feel free to uh, hit up that comment section down below. Let me know exactly what you guys think. Is this going to change up the high tier meta? Is it going to leave it as is? Or maybe you guys are frustrated that the Italians, the Chinese, the Japanese, everyone is just kind of getting left behind while the big three nations being USA, Russia and Germany are getting all the cool stuff. Feel free to let me know what you guys think, and I'll try to chime in every once in a while and add my own opinion into it, assuming I didn't already get my point across here in the video section itself. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this Talking Head video, and thank you for checking this out and taking the time to watching this or for watching this. You guys know the whole spiel. It's Thanksgiving. I'm tired. I'm in a food coma right now. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you not only in the next video or even those streams. When they do return, I do have some network issues uh, happening right now. Give or take a week until it gets corrected. And I'll see you guys in the games themselves. Until next time.